Hey everybody, this is Way to Fail, bringing you today Darkest Dungeon, a game that you may have seen me post a few streams of here. I told you I'd be doing a little bit of a series with this, and I am, with the one catch that this is actually going to be a full darkness run. That means if things go terrible, that's fine. We won't be using torches, which for those of you who are familiar with the game, you know that eventually that can be a good thing, but starting out it can make things quite rough, but I think it is the kind of injection of challenge we need. We are playing build uh, 7601. This is an early access game as you can see scrolling from the bottom here most important thing to keep in mind that this is post some of the balance changes that I was waiting for the developers to put in so things are fundamentally harder because some people would say the game is not difficult enough but we're gonna be doing a fresh save and what we're gonna be starting with is just the basic campaign and after this kind of intro spiel we're gonna I'm gonna let you watch both the uh, opening cinematics and then we'll get into talking a little bit about the game because this is a game that has a lot to delve into. It is a roguelike. There is a lot of challenge that goes to and a lot of interesting party building. But let's go ahead and dive on in. Ruin has come to our family. You remember our venerable house? Opulent and imperial gazing proudly from its stoic perch above the moor. I lived all my years in that ancient, rumor-shadowed manor, fattened by decadence and luxury. And yet I began to tire of conventional extravagance. Singular unsettling tales suggested the mansion itself was a gateway to some fabulous and unnameable power. With relic and ritual, I've bent every effort towards the excavation and recovery of those long-buried secrets, exhausting what remained of our family fortune on swarthy workmen and sturdy shovels. At last, in the salt-soaked crags beneath the lowest foundations, we unearthed that damnable portal of antediluvian evil. Our every step unsettled the ancient earth. But we were in a realm of death and madness. In the end, I alone fled laughing and wailing through those blackened arcades of antiquity. Until consciousness failed me. You remember our venerable house. Opulent and imperial. It is a festering abomination. I beg you, return home, claim your birthright, and deliver our family from the ravenous clutching shadows of the darkest dungeon. You will arrive along the old road. It winds with a troubling, serpent-like suggestion through the corrupted countryside. Leading only, I fear, to ever more tenebrous places. There is a sickness in the ancient, pitted cobbles of the old road. And on its writhing path, you will face viciousness, violence, and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors. So steal yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. The old road will take you to hell, but in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. Alright, so there you have your introduction, and here we go into kind of one of the two parts of the game here. There's really a dungeon crawler portion and a town building portion. And what we're going to find here is that you have a few different things to look at at the UI. Some more important than others. If you look at your character sheets, you have different classes. One is a crusader, one is a highwayman. And you pretty much go through dungeon. This is the intro tutorial level, so it's pretty basic. But you have just a little bit of food. You have one map. You go. You have rooms that you can go to. 
Each character has different abilities. These will make a little bit more sense as we fight, but pretty much up to four people in a party. Some characters prefer being in the front, some in the back. Some prefer hitting targets in the front, some in the back. There are camping skills, which we won't get into for a few videos, and there's resistances that we'll talk about them when they come up, but there's different debuffs such as stun, blight, disease, uh, bleed, and death blow, which we don't want to get death blow very well. But yeah, we have Dismas, who has a hard noggin, quick reflexes and is a known cheat in town he cannot gamble there's different quirks that characters have those will come into play very importantly later on Reynald and these are two characters you get no matter when you start as a warrior of light so whenever lights above 75 he gets 10 percent damage he's not going to like this run very much he's also a kleptomaniac which means he will steal items all the time and i've had him steal plenty of things for me in another playthrough and he will only pray for stress relief so we'll get into that because there are there's a level system there's a stress system when you get really stressed it's not quite eternal darkness level where you start hallucinating everywhere but Similar idea, if your stress gets too high, things get fucked. So let's go ahead, we Brigands go to the different room. Alright, the so there's the a little hand. bit of narration in the background. And the narration is good in this game, if a little dramatic, but everything's scripted Dispatch here. You have your first combat fashion. tutorial. All may hear of your arrival. Now, there's different types of attacks you can do. You see that these little red lines are linked. That means that can attack a group of people, but I'm just going to do the individual attack right now. Hopefully getting a bleed debuff here. He has 25% bleed. So usually you don't lose characters in the opening tutorial unless you get unlucky crits. But it doesn't mean it's impossible. You can't actually lose the tutorial. And some of it just depends on luck. But anytime you do this, you get health and everything. But we are at 88% light. There is a camp that we can go to to interact with objects. I don't interact with objects too much unless I have an item. I used to do it a lot more and that would cause more problems than it was worth. There is much to be found in forgotten places. Yeah. So the narrator, I'm going to try to not talk over him too much, but he's there so often. But there we go. Food. This is interesting because the food doesn't have a lot of flavor text, but the gold does. Gold greases palms, builds empires, and instigates murder. Jay, dull and green like rotting flesh. You'll see that a lot of the um, text in this game is m pretty melodramatic, but I mean, what can you do? So. Send these vermin a Boss fight for the tutorial. You have the Brigand Ful Fusilier, no who you will learn to hate them. as this goes on a Brigand Bloodletter. He takes up two positions. So if I try and attack the back row, I can only do it with a Grape Shot Blast or with the Pistol Shot. And I'm debating whether I want to take this guy down first, because he's going to end up doing a lot more damage here. I could do Take Aim to try and self buff, and that's not a terrible idea. In fact, I think I'm going to do that this time. I, I've played this tutorial multiple times just to do things here, and Blanket Fire, that's good that it misses. When it crits, it crits and hits everybody really hard. Point Blank Shot, wow. Okay, good RNG on my side here. Let's see if we can uh, not worry about this now. I am going to go for a Stunning Blow. They did just, he has 50% stun resist, and they did just patch in and see the dodge doesn't matter there, but any successful stun that you get will now Such add a stacking debuff. Assault. So that's a, or a stacking stun resist. So you can't stun lock people like maybe you could before. All right, so we're just gonna let's put protection on. We're gonna play this a little slow, especially since I got critted here. Good thing that there's a dodge once again. Take aim, adding accuracy and crit. And high women already have pretty dang good accuracy as is. So hopefully it kills them. Good. This guy it's not doesn't hit nearly as hard. But you see there's different attacks, they all have a base accuracy, some of them will do less damage than other. Zealous Accusation hits multiple people in a row, Stunning row will, stunning Blow will possibly stun, and it got resisted there, so he still has 50% stun resist. Rain of Whips, so we're just dodging all the time. I'm going to go for starting to bleed this guy, since he's on the first two rows. I can still hit him with a lot of these attacks. So let's just see, still resisting bleeds all around. Can I stun you? I just want to see a stun. One stun. Resist. He's just going to keep going. I may as well just go for the kill. Another nice thing about bleed is that it'll stack. So, four damage per three rounds. So this guy's eventually going to kill himself, as long as he doesn't crit and, like, insta-pwn me. But yeah, there will be no blood left for the leeches. No, there won't be. And let's see. Smite. So you're just missing everything now, but that's okay. And open veins. So now we're getting 6 damage per 3 rounds, next time he attacks he will die from bleed. Do I give him that opportunity? No! Finally with a hit and a kill. 
perhaps the turning point. So we get, oh wow, actually that's not what I'm used to seeing. 20% scouting chance, plus 5 dodge, and minus 8 stress heal. That's actually a really nice item for this early in the game. So this is a bandage trap chest. Does Something doesn't quite look right about it. You can select which character will open. I've never been able to get the treasure out of here. Uh, so I'm just going to see if I can open it with bandages. That item had no effect. Well, I just threw away bandages. Sweet. And it's trapped. No matter what you do, now you're blighted and cursed. Your stress is not going up very much, but let's just complete the mission and go to town. Yay, so 5,000 gold and a little more gold. No other heirlooms. We'll talk about everything that's in here. The town kind of holds your hand early, and nothing is unlocked right away, so we're not going to be able to see everything. Slow draw, that's really terrible. First round minus four speed still sucks. And then no stress penalty when walking backwards. Decent. Welcome home, such as it is. So here is our this first squalid hamlet, trip these to corrupted town. Lands. They are yours now. And we have... Bound to them. Yeah. <laughs> Narrator's just going to keep talking. So week one, we have level one people. We all survived. And you'll get a lot of information from this screen at the start here. There's a lot of quest goals that we have. And it's still early access... So there's only so much that we can do at this point. And there is a context-sensitive help, men help menu, which is nice. The graveyard, fortunately, has nobody in we'll it. Have lost Covered people on the first the mission before I think earth. I said that. But one of the Rain most, there's a lot of rooms medium. that are not open yet. We need to complete more quests to unlock them. But one place that is important is the stagecoach. Women and this men, is where you get more people. And outlaws, now these... And corpses. Now these people will all always be here every time. Now that the road is clear. And sorry for continuing to talk over the narrator here, but you'll be hearing a lot of the narrator. Some people say, oh, the narrator's probably going to be the last boss, maybe, I don't know. But you'll always get a plague doctor, which they did just buff the class. Battlefield Medicine now has a healing component as well. And uh, I believe they adjusted some of the blight damage for some of these attacks. So this is actually a pretty damn good kit believe it or not. He doesn't have the AoE stun blinding gas, but Plague Doctor's a little bit better than it used to be. And the Vestal... Than the blood battlefield. Okay, this Vestal is curious, so wants to is going to want to look in the books whenever in fear of beasts. And we'll look into some of other things in a second. And the Wield does good. There's different areas. The Wield is one of them. Uh, th what's nice about this is, uh, other than the plus five torch and everything here, I'd love to have Hand of Light or Dazzling Light or Judgment. Mace Bas Bash, not my favorite, but at least she comes with two heals, a party heal and an individual heal. So it's not like I have a choice. I'm going to take her anyway. A sister of battle, pious and unrelenting. So if we want to if we want to do this, are you going to be better in the back? I think he's actually going to be better in the back because he can use everything from the back row. But I try and keep my characters together here. Most important upgrade you can do Week one, by the way, is uh, increasing the number of heroes available. You have enough to do it twice. You lose all your deeds. I'm finding myself very deed hungry. You have to pay heirlooms to get these things in, which is interesting to me. It's like, it's interesting to me because, I mean, it's like, look at all this wealth that you used to have. Now you're just throwing away all these family treasures for everything else to try and overtake things. So yeah, I will be needing to get a lot of deeds, but we are going to be playing in the dark. So let's go ahead and start Your work begins. with our uh, first location here, which is the ruins. Now, we're just going to go ahead and put a party in together. There's not too much to really talk about other than just we're going to do let's go, and we are going to actually equip our uh, highwayman with the uh, good trinket that we found, my sage stress heal is not too bad, especially when you can get extra dodge, which dodge is very important early. You need to do something to take your mind off of this. You're going to go right back into it. So we're going to do our first skirmish map here. And I will warn you, I've actually, I've played this game a bit, quite a bit. I've never done Torchless. I've never done Torchless this early. So one of the things that you'll need to do is just try and buy some of the provisions. And one of the nice things about torches is that you don't loot, you don't end up uh, spending all the money on provisions every time for torches. So we're gonna spend some money on a few other things here. Skeleton key might not be worth it, but we'll at least get one bandage. Now, one of the important themes of this game is that things are not always gonna go well. It is considered okay if I actually have to bail on a mission. So if we look. 
And if things look bad and it looks like I'm about to lose everybody, I will just run. Because eventually I will get stronger. What's the worst thing that is? Because this game is already too easy. The fiends must be driven back. Now, I could sit here and wait for the torch meter to go all the way down, but that will just be a little annoying. Now, this there's two types of dungeons early. The uh, exploration ones where you want got to explore 90% of the rooms or complete 100% of the room battles. So we're going to start with this one, and this is why I always bring multiple shovels, because you get to these, they will take a lot of time if you don't do it. So let's see here. Urn, I'm going to skip that because it's probably diseased. And you can see already people are getting stressed, and this is actually a pretty nasty opening combat round. So let's see what we got. Plague Grenade. I can blight the people in the back. I can blight the people in the front. So it's nice that he can attack everybody. Let's blight the people in the... Whoa! Well, let's dodge. That was a good try. Please don't crit. Okay, well, at least I have a party healer early. So what are we going to be doing here? Definite party heal. Unfortunately, this guy who has such high accuracy is... Uh, going slow because of the slow draw quirk, which you can see there are quirks down here. He's a known cheat. And he is slow to the draw and gets dodged. And this is kind of the story of this game. Now I could try and stun this guy, but I think it's going to be... Yeah, let's go for the stun. Still resisting it all the time, so... Reign of Whips for everybody. At least we're not getting critted right now, but we are getting bled. Nice thing about the Witch Doctor, though... Come on, hit him. There we go. For six, which is not great. Witch Doctor can actually heal uh, himself and someone else when there's bleed. Or when there's anything. So that's where Battlefield Medicine turns out really nice. Now I have a bandage here as well. I feel like maybe I should go for the bleed here first. Because honestly, one damage for three rounds is not as awful. So let's go for the Plague Grenade one more time. There we go. So three blight. Oh, of course they're going to resist the blight. Ugh. All right. Well, didn't say this game was easy, but I'm not even on like low torchlight yet. Yeah, this is one of the harder encounters you will get. Please actually stun him. No, I've. I've it's been like so many stunning hits where 50% stun resist doesn't end up doing a lot. So this is the kind of game we have here. And I said, if I lose everybody here early, it would be because I'm recording for YouTube. But that's okay. So a little bit more. We're going to have to start seriously thinking about healing. We can possibly retreat, but it increases stress. It's just if... Wow! Holy cow, that was a lot. One more. This will be the stun. Finally. Now he's going to have higher stun resist the next round. Let's do Battlefield Medicine. Cures can also be resisted. Wow, double cure fail. And this will be the crit that I've been waiting for? No. Okay. Uh, can I kill him? I can do 5 damage, 3 to 8. Confidence six. surges as the enemy crumbles. Alright, so he's unstunned, but he's buffed now with the 20% stun resist. Alright, there's a few things I can do here. Can reduce his chance to dodge. That cut third is going to be doing a lot of work. I need to party heal, even if it's one at a time. Yeah, this is... Okay, so there's some bad crits. And we're at Death's Door already with Reynold. So that's fun. Now, Death's Door, we'll look at this here. When he gets to zero, it's Death's Door. It increases stress for everybody. A heal will take him out of Death's Door. Actually, that bleed should have... If he bleeds, he could go into a uh, savings throw kind of mode where... If he bleeds and dies, then there's an issue here. But his stress is already pretty damn high. Let's go ahead. Protect is not going to do a lot for me here. So let's just see if we can take this guy down. And this is how we know things are going well. Alright, so... Good crit. And he's blighted. And notice that my crits decrease stress. That's what that little... Shimmer Shimmer meant. Let's see here. So if I can bleed him, I can actually kill this guy right now. Oh, well, he's gonna die anyway now. So that's good. It's gonna Wow, okay, and a fantastic dodge as well. Prodigious size alone does not dissuade the sharpened blade. Alright, so heal here. And we'll go into the next round and maybe get another heal as well. I feel like I should try stunning this guy. He only has 25% stun resist. So of course he resists it. I want to I want to do that because we don't want this guy being able to attack and if he does attack quite a bit that's gonna knock her back one 
which your characters can get moved around and that changes what attacks and abilities they can use or not use. But I just want to take him down slowly but surely. I feel like I need the party heal right here. One Really wanted a two instead of one. Go for the stun one more time. I think that bleed's going to end up killing him regardless. Alright, so battlefield medicine here. Divine Comfort. More important to heal up everybody. I know he is down really low. Let's actually take... No, let's... Let's... Uh, do I want to try and kill him right now? He's going to die from the bleed anyway, so... It doesn't really matter, because that bleed goes for two more rounds and we'll do two more damage, so... Why do we tarry and invite danger? Okay, so, wow, that's interesting. That's really interesting. So, they added another mechanic now where if you keep these fights up for a long time, your party will start to get stressed because you're just not killing people right away. That's cool. I love that the uh, developers of this early access game are actually uh, adding some nice balance things like that because my strategy used to be doing exactly what I was doing, which is... Uh, just stall and fight and stall and fight but still that was a uh, tough battle that was actually just the first dungeon battle we've had but that's one of the worst comps that you can get so we're gonna get a little bit of extra scouting there is a trap up ahead that at least we scouted and uh, old habits are gonna die hard I'm gonna be clicking for torches that aren't there because like I said I've not actually played with torches before but or without torches so this will be interesting if I can complete this mission I will be shocked I'm fully expecting to not be able to but we've got to get all of the room encounters. So, hunger. Let's eat. And we can see a trap up ahead, and we want to select a class that will actually do that. And there it is, disarmed. That doesn't reduce stress or anything, and we're going to totally avoid the Iron Maiden. There can be treasure in there, or you can get claustrophobic people to, like, kill themselves. And here's one room encounter. And, wow, we actually surprised them regardless of not being torchless so hmm interesting well let's go ahead and uh, the R blister a little bit more of a threat all these guys are kinda tough so we do like the blight there we do want the party heal here we're just gonna try and knock these guys down as much as possible do like zealous accusation here that is a great crit I will take that even though it means I wasted damage on other things because now these guys are up front and they're immune to bleed because they're undead. So knocking them down one to two is great. A devastating blow. And these guys are going to do some d damage to me, but hey, what can you what can you really do about it other than just hope they don't crit? Now when the thing when it gets a little darker, we're going to start having a higher crit chance and the enemy is going to start really being buffed with their abilities so something to look out for All right so which arbalist do we want dead if he's blighted it doesn't really matter because he's gonna die in two rounds now maybe less the fiend falls, a fiend okay so I'd love a dodge here nah, three damage is okay and we get our heal off as well so it's only one health but every little bit is going to count so resisted the blight and smite, which is still his most accurate attack, and a little bit of treasure. So treasure chest here with your family sigil, and we get a pretty good scout. Maybe two rooms? No, just one. Now if we take the skeleton key, unlocks a hidden compartment. Oh no! Okay, fortune smirks at last. Yeah, the problem with that is that I actually uh, triggered it with the kleptomaniac. You can choose which character opens the chest. If you open it with the kleptomaniac, he's going to take it. So, I actually did avoid that by exploiting another bug because I suck. If you drag the items down, that will ignore it. Yeah, look, the light is fading. The current love affects many game mechanics. The darker gets, the harder things get, but the better the rewards. And we don't have anything here. So, plus stress, plus monster accuracy and damage, loot player crits. Let's see what she has to say. Stack of literary treasures. A most unsettling passage. Oh, well, blast it all. That's 34 stress on you. So, another trap. Like I said, this is part of the fun of going into the darkness. 
I believe in a thing called, I don't know, so plus loot, plus player crits, plus good scouting, and we're going to have another hallway encounter. This may be the last encounter in the dungeon, I doubt it, but hopefully this encounter isn't so bad. If I lose some people here early, I'll survive, but plus three stress, plus all kinds of things, so play grenades only going to hit the person in the back. These cultist brawlers are a much bigger threat than the bow and courtier. So let's go ahead and hit you for four. And Blight, that's a nice start. Please hit. That's an even better start. All right, so here's more stress for my healer, my Vestal. And once she gets all the way up, that gnaws at the back of my mind. Yeah, so apparently throwing a goblet at somebody hurts. And when it's darker, they get to see better, so. Question is, do I go for the illumination and try and uh, take somebody out here? feel like the party heal is still the way to go. Eight healing for one action is fantastical. You die, which is good. Perhaps the turning point. And zealous accusation. You dodge the accusation. It's like, how do you dodge words? This is how. Okay, well, I can end this fight right here. And of course, nobody does enough damage. It's like the, the smallest hit possible. Oh well. As long as I don't get critted here. I'll be okay. He's down to four health and bleeding, which stinks. So uh, let's just divine grace you for five. Great. You cannot crit heal, as far as I know. Not disorienting blast. Battlefield medicine. Fortunately, that cured the blight and makes it even nicer. Please hit. Okay. At least we're still trying to fight. So there's your the nasty crits. Turns. I really want to get a heal off, so we'll take aim. Just want to get one more. See if we can stun you for three. Oh well. Worst this things that can happen. At least promises success. So it's getting darker. We're not in the room yet, so we're not going to look at that statue. We will look in this crate, which has some heirlooms, which we'll take. And let's see if this is the last encounter. I feel all right. We're now at. Major stress, major problems. Not gonna get surprised here, but these guys are gonna start hitting a lot harder and critting a lot more. So she is at max stress. Her resolve is tested and she's hopeless, which is one of the worst things that you can get because that means she might skip turns. That means that if she tries to use abilities, it may not work. And I'm not actually able to see what's going on with combat due to the tutorials. All right, so her stats are reduced. We've got to end this fight in a hurry. we got to hope for some good RNG. And we got to hope that that's going to be Death's Door for you Injury almost in a moment. All right. Set the stage for oh, play grenade in the back. You really, you really got to hit that. So he's going to be pulled up two rows, which is okay. I'd rather him be hit. And we really need this to work. There we go. Just as long as we can take one thing out. If I have to run after... This room, that's okay. I said I'm just hoping against hope that uh, I don't die here. We're also hoping against hope that we don't have him dodge everything, but at least I dodge back. That's a positive. All right, so Noxious Blast. See if we can get the kill. There we go. I know he just attacked, but this person... The Acolyte's a lot weaker in the uh, front, so she passed. That's why we can't rely on our healers anymore. That's actually going to put him at death's door, and he's stressed, and his resolve's tested. The dark is their ally. Pitch is black. There we go. It's game over, man. Game over. Vigorous. All right, so that's sometimes you get positive traits as well. All right, so virtuous sometimes. Oh, I said vigorous, didn't I? So pitch is black, plus stress, plus monster accuracy and damage, but we get way better loot. Okay, so we want to actually take you down. Maybe. Maybe this time. Round three. Please, for the love of something, heal well. So he's off death's door now. And he's just going to be vigorous the rest of the game. So Eldritch push. Push him back to. That's fine. That's more than fine. That's just where he started. Alright, so... Please be blighted and then we can... Nope, no blight. Uh, might as well do this. 
So yeah, we made it to pitch black towards the very end. Is this the last room or not? A trifling victory. We got one torch. Victory, We're not going to use it, and we have to complete 100% of room battles. Do I feel like risking it? Let's see if we can get into this chest. Locked. It's trapped. Just bleeding. Well, that's why we brought the bandage. You know, it wouldn't be a fun first video if I didn't just go for it. So, we're going to go for it, and if my team screws up, we're going to die. And that's okay, because we didn't get a scout. Which is where the uh, scout bandage is, or the scout thing is pretty nice. Yeah, I probably shouldn't be going forward with this much stress, but... We'll see. I'm really hoping for things not like that. Is the so he's at death's door again. His efficacy unwitnessed by okay, his I said I was going to be a big bad before, but he's at death's door. I'm going to have to just abandon. Now when you abandon, I do get to keep the money that's here, which is a positive. I do get to keep the heirlooms and stacks of everything that's here, which is a positive. Now if I, wait a minute, if I eat food, okay good, he's healed a little bit, healed a little more. Oh, we do have some healing items, okay, well, let's just hope the rest of our group doesn't get hungry here. Oh, surprised as well. Oh, this sucks. Here I was thinking, okay, things are going to be okay. And now we have, he can't do shit in the front line. And here he is. And he can't do shit in the back line. And there he is. So we're going to have to waste some time turning around here. Let's at least see if we can push you back or something. All right, so it doesn't matter if she gets stressed. She's already bonkers. We're just going to have to send you up one row at a time. At least him being so far back means he's not going to get rended like this early. I was really hoping to avoid a fight here. was really, really hoping to avoid a fight. But ah, that's how it goes. That's why it's fun and interesting to play Darkest Dungeon on the not just the mode you've kind of figured out playing before. So one bleed, that's good. That's really good. If I could just have my people not die, that'd be fantastic. And as much as I want to press on and try and get a successful first mission, I think I am going to have to run after this fight, so. Can I use Battlefield Medicine? No, I can only use it on the back rows. That's pretty terrible. Alright, so. Uh, I guess since I don't have a bandage, we're just going to have to put you back. Which means... We'll see. Oh, crit for two! So he's at death's door now. And what's your affliction today? Breathes heavily. Oh, he's not dead yet. Okay. That's a positive. We'll stay up here. Divine comfort, sort of. That takes him off of death watch. At least. And as long as you're not bleeding, of course you're bleeding. Well, no, you're not bleeding. Eldritch push. Oh, good job, AI. At least he resisted the push. Teetering on the brink. And he's... Everybody's going crazy. And he's selfish. Oh wow, we're actually all max stressed. Cool. Bison's resolve masochistic. So you know where all my money is going to go from this mission is actually to try and cure these people of their maladies. It's over for us. It's over. Well, you've already hit your uh, max stress possible, so... We are going to actually go for the heal here. Cured. Both of them cured. That's good. Unfortunately, some of these things can mean that you actually resist heals. Good crit. That's what I like. Right where it hurts. There we go. So he's now at death's door again. And now everybody is max stressed. Work your leave on me, villain. I will crave knowledge of it. We get a little bit of dialogues here. He needs a bandage. He's not dead, though. And one more death. Can I actually end this now? The, uh... Oh, you're gonna pass, actually. Marked! She marked herself! Alright, so if I do a group heal here, I kinda wanna see if I can end this fight, but group heal here possibly makes it so I survive. Because that bleed could've killed me if I missed. Alright. Best accuracy for an attack with one health is stunning blow. Good. Sorry, kiddos, I want to stick around, but yeah, go ahead and cry. Wow, really? These go ahead and cry. Can be they can be well, there we go. 
It is a skirmish where you have to complete 100% of rune battles, and I'm about to be in another rune, but if I go into one more battle, my team is going to wipe. And that's where abandoning quest is okay. I mean, they're not going to get more stress. The metal of heart, brain, and body. Now, I did miss out on some stuff, but I did get some heirlooms, and I will be able to get some other things in town, which we will go over very briefly. So everybody's going crazy. We do have some level 1 people. He's compulsive, need to do specific actions. He's God-fearing, and town will only pray for stress relief, so we'll have to remember that. And Slayer of the Beast. So we'll do that makes this a little bit of a longer video. Caretaker. I fear his long-standing duties here have... But we have some unlocked buildings that... I guess we can go into that a little bit more next time, but I think the most important thing right now is just to, while I'm thinking about it, while it's the fresh on my mind, dusted, the pews set straight. we're going to have to try and relieve stress here with. Faithful. He only prays, so we'll have to relieve that. And you have to do these things through cure maladies. Now, do we have any other quirks here? Oh, they'll both only pray for stress relief. Well, that's too bad. Uh, you don't have any negative quirks like that, and, uh, yeah, pretty much all of my people are crazy, except he didn't actually get something else. And he's saying dice or whatever, it doesn't matter as long as it distracts Fresh me. That's not quite true, because he can't do any of these. Alright, so the let's go ahead and go to the bar the and drink your pain away. Could send Maudit to the brothel, but it's more expensive for not the same results. For about the same results, we'll send you to the gambling hall. Hopefully don't gamble, gamble away more of my fortune and everything. And I can actually upgrade some of these buildings early. In fact, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and upgrade All these at the start since I am playing a dark run. But next way. time we're going to hit the handy dandy hand. stagecoach and we're going to have four fresh people going into the meat grinder of the darkest dungeon. This is way to fail. Hope you enjoyed it. Next time we will see how much more afraid you can be of the dark. Take care.